Oh my goodness. God is so good. Let me tell you something. Guys, from the bottom of my heart, I want you to listen to this story because it changed my life. Let me tell you something. There was this, um, this, was, there was this older lady that was going to get surgery. And while she was there getting checked up, she noticed that her doctor came in and he was very short with her. And he seemed really stressed out. He was so stressed out and, and, and she noticed that and she, she asked him a question. She said, doctor, do you mind, do you mind if I ask you a question? He's like, sure, what, what is it? And he was kind of blushing her off. It's like, you seem really stressed out. Is everything okay? And it, it shocked him. He's like, I'm so sorry. It's just because I got two little ones at home. We have a toddler right now. I haven't been able to get any sleep. It's just, you know, and in, in the doctor's office, it's just so crazy. And she's like, what would I do to trade spots with you? See, she told him this, you will never know the value of a memory until it becomes, you will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. She's like, that's just a season in your life. She's like, what would I do to wake up in the middle of the night and nurture my baby back to sleep? See, that's a season in your life. And I seen one of my guys getting so stressed out because things weren't going his way. And I told him, Adele, are you kidding me? This is what's gonna make you. This is the test. If you listen to any legend, Mike Sharp always talks about, man, the good old days when we didn't know we were gonna make it. Art Williams talks about it all the time. He's like, man, if I can go back in time and relive that moment, I would do it all over again. See guys, that's a test. You need to understand this, that God has already given you the blessing. He's just waiting on you. See, a lot of us, like I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. No, 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 no. When adversity hits, it's a test. He's waiting on you. It's how you respond that's gonna give you that blessing. How many of you guys ready to respond with me? And guys, I'm telling you, I remember I was 22 years of age. Franny was 20, and we were driving two hours one way to San Diego. And for two years, we did everything we got. And one night, we found out that our whole team, we built a $30,000 base shop out there alone. Our whole team got together and they quit on us. Just like that. We had over $6,000 in chargebacks. We thought it was a mistake. We're like, this got to be wrong. We don't even make six grand for a month. Something's got to be wrong. And I remember to this day, it gets me emotional. I remember telling Franny crying. I'm like, it's okay, Franny. It's okay. This is going to make our story one day. You know what, Franny? One day someone's going to prospect them. Someone's going to talk to them. And they're going to ask them. Hey, they're they're going to tell them, hey, you, you want to join Primera? It's, oh, no, I already did that deal. I tried it. Really? With who? When Mario and Franny Arizon. And they're going to drop their stuff. And they're going to say, Mario and Franny Arizon? You know they're the youngest million dollar earners in Primerica history. You quit on them? I was saying that. I was saying that as a 22 year old with tears in my eyes. And I remember, I remember like it was yesterday. See guys, these moments, you know, you always hear about the, the good old days, the good old days. Enjoy these moments, because these are the moments that define you. It's how you respond, and it's the biggest blessing in the world. Guys, I'm telling you, there was one of my guys that got, um, he called me up, he was a new recruit, and he was so discouraged. And he's like, hey, one, one of my cousin's friends here, and he's, he's teasing me, and he's making fun of me, saying Primerica doesn't work. I'm, I'm like, where are you at? And I pulled up. And while I was there, the guy didn't know I was in Primerica, and he was just destroying this young man. He got his dreams, and he ripped them apart right in front of him, just ripped them apart. And he did nothing. And I told him, Joe, how can you let him just do that to your dreams? And I'm, I'm like, dude, if this same dude got in here and took your phone and said, I'm taking your phone, will you let him? He's like, of course not. I'm like, what would you do? I would do anything. I would fight him. I would, I would, man, you'd probably cuss him out, huh? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you would fight like that for a phone that's replaceable. Your dreams are not replaceable. You gotta fight for your dreams. How many?
many of you guys ready to fight for your dreams? How many of you guys ready? Don't you let nobody steal your dreams! Nobody! Man, let's go! Fired up, baby, let's go! That's what I'm talking about. That's the caliber of speaker that we have for you guys today, man. So without any further ado, they are on, they are ready. Let's bring it out for the great Franny Arizona. Good morning, guys. How are you? I hope everyone's doing amazing out in Florida, right? That's where you guys are at. We're over here in California, so it's 7 a.m. our time, but you know what? I'll do a meeting anytime for this team, and um, thank you for having us on. Honestly, I, I love watching that video. It just brings back all the feelings, right, that I felt that day when, you know, Mario spoke and all the things that he spoke about, you know, and, and we tend to remember all those moments, you know, during our careers and you know, the hard times that we had. And at that very moment, you're just so grateful that you didn't quit and that you didn't give up. Cause you know what, Eric, and I see your brother Jason on is that, um, you know, most people let those small moments in their career, which at the time seems so big, right? Take them out, right? And they make a permanent decision on a temporary situation and they let go of the most amazing opportunity, right? Honestly, guys, Primerica has to be the greatest opportunity in this country and, and, and if not in this world. And I'm living proof of that. OK, I'm going to I'm going to go first really quick. Uh, I know that you guys saw Mario on the video and his energy is through the roof. And I'm sure it'll be that way even at seven in the morning. Right. But I just want to share my personal story with you guys, um, you know, because a lot of a lot of people don't know my personal story. They don't know how I was introduced to this business and how I start. And, and really, Eric, if you think, if you look at, if I could show you a picture of me, um, or you can meet the 18 year old Franny that started in Primerica, you'd be like, no way that that is not Franny Arizon. And I'm telling you, yes, what I love about this company guys about this opportunity is that it is a level playing field level playing field. What does that mean? That you can literally come in with experience. You can come in as a professional, you know, superstar athlete, like your coaches, right? You can come in literally any background, any walk of life and have success here. Okay, guys. And I have to thank your parents. Um, I can't even remember the year, but I think we were like brand new RVPs and they spoke at a company trip at an Yvonne and they completely changed my life. I mean, I already knew that Primerica could work. You know, we were RVPs. I think we had just gotten our ring, but they shared their story and your mom um, shared her story, her perspective on partnership, and it completely changed my life. So I just wanted to thank your parents, your head coaches, man, you guys are in the best organization with the best coaches that man, Guys, honestly, they don't know that, but they change your life. And every time we see them, we tell them, we give them big hugs and we say, man, you change your life. Thank you so much. So I just wanted to say that really quick, but really quick, a little bit about myself. Um, I was actually 18 years old when I was introduced uh, to this amazing company. And to be honest with you, I wasn't even really the one invited, right? I wasn't the one invited to the op night. My friend was invited. I just kind of tagged along with her. And I just said, man, this is pretty awesome. Like, this is something I could do during the summer. You know, I'll get my licenses. I have no idea what life insurance is. I have no idea what investments are, right? But I can learn. And all I knew is that I didn't want any of it, right? Because all I heard was my parents fighting about bills all the time, right? So I'm like, whatever they're talking about, I got to learn not to have none because my parents fight all day long about that, right? So I was 18 years old when I was introduced. I really didn't think that this was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. I said, you know, I can make some extra income. You know, um, by the time I go to college, I could just focus on college full time. And, you know, long story short, here I am 16 years later, you know, and I think like maybe 30 days in, I decided this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Um, and obviously there was a little, you know, hurdles that I had to go through telling my dad that I wasn't going to go to college. You know, not, I'm not knocking college at all whatsoever. I, I believe in higher education. I believe in, you know, we need to have doctors. We need to have attorneys. We need to have all that. But I never was presented with an, with an opportunity 
to make a million dollars a year. And, and Eric, at that point, I didn't think that I was going to make a million dollars a year. I thought, man, if I can make 50,000 a year or maybe even a hundred thousand, right. When my vision started stretching a little bit, man, what would we do with so much money? Right. This is exactly what I needed. Cause coming from my background, you know, both of my parents immigrated uh, here from Mexico and obviously what to give us a better life, to give us more opportunity, right. To give us a, a better future. And so that's all my dad instilled in us, like get good grades so you can get a good job, right? I don't want you guys working like me, like a dog, right? For the rest of your life. My dad uh, used to work at the trash company um, and my mom was a seamstress. So she used to make clothes, right? For these big department stores and obviously very low paying jobs, right? They always struggled financially. I remember just always struggling financially. I just never remember a time that we didn't struggle. So um, when I was eight years old, we actually moved uh, from Los Angeles to Riverside where we live now. And um, you know, a year later, my parents actually got uh, separated. And it wasn't because they didn't love each other or because they didn't, obviously because they didn't love us, it's because they couldn't afford to live together. As crazy as that sounds, they could not afford to live together. And my mom really wanted us to keep us in the schools that we were in. So we stayed in Riverside and we rented a room from one of my mom's friends. So we would stay there during the week and then we'd go home to my dad's house on the weekend. So you can't tell me a family like mine, that family is not, I mean, I'm sorry, that money is not everything. I'm sure you guys have all heard that, right? Money's not everything, but you can't tell my family that because my family was separated because of money. So I just had a burning desire since I was a little girl to make money. I didn't know how or what I was going to do, but I just wanted to be rich, right? I wanted to, I wanted that money was never going to be an issue, right? Because I remember standing in the free lunch lines. I remember going to food banks on Friday night with my mom to get a basket of food, right? I remember that. And so, you know, you know, fast forward, I don't know what, 15 years when I was introduced to this company, like I said, I didn't know that this was what I was looking for, right? And maybe there's some of you on this call that maybe you got started to make extra income or you got started because you love the products or, you know, maybe your friend just invited you to come listen to this couple from California speak, right? But honestly, thank God that I, you know, I prayed about something like this and I, it showed up to my door, not the way that I wanted it to be or what I thought it was going to look like, but I listened and I said, you know what, this is my opportunity to, to, uh, to change my family's life. And I was actually recruited by somebody on Mario's team. So we didn't actually get started together. A lot of people think we started together. No, we didn't, but we actually did meet in high school. So um, I was actually 14 years old. He was 16 when we met, we had a math class. Um, we didn't date in high school. Actually, we dated after. So, I mean, it's a crazy story. I think they could probably make a movie out of it, right? Um, but honestly, I just feel tremendously blessed. Um, if you would tell me 15, uh, this is our 16th year actually in the business. If you would tell me 16 years ago on that day that I signed my IBA, that this is what it was going to look like, I'd be like, you're crazy. There's no way. There's no way. And honestly, um, income to us today is just like a scoreboard, right? And the reason why we continue to grow is because we realize that the bigger our dream, the bigger our team, the bigger our vision, the more room our team has to grow. And last uh, last week, Mario told me that our income was right around 320,000 with all of our codes. We have the honor and the privilege of having four businesses within Primerica and we made $320,000. And I'm like, what the heck? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Like, that is how amazing this opportunity is. But let me tell you where to start, right? And, I, and, and that sounds, you're looking at the, a different chapter of mine, okay? So I don't want you to start beating up on yourself and be like, man, I'm such a dud. You know, no, guys, we are in a different chapter and you are on your way there. And I know that this team is on the Ruby run, right? And we're going to teach you some stuff whether you're brand new or whether you're an RVP, right? And you yourself are going for some diamonds, right? We're gonna teach you some stuff. But what I wanna make sure that everybody understands is that the I same, that. I'm sorry, my series, again? the same right? That is sitting there watching this screen is not gonna be the same one that is paid a hundred thousand. If you haven't got your ring that is paid a million dollars a year that is paid, whatever your financial goal is, whatever your goal is, the same you is not going to be that person. So do we have to make some changes? Absolutely. 
right? And Eric told me that the people that are on this call are the winners, right? You guys are the ones that are making it happen. You guys just hit 700,000, right? As a hierarchy. So I'm going to talk to you guys like you're my base shop, right? I'm going to talk to you like you're asking me, coach, coach me. I want to get to the next level. And it starts with the basics. Okay, guys, this business is fairly simple. Okay, we tend to complicate this business, right? And if you if you really think about it, if I if I really start to think about, okay, what are the things that move this business? Okay, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with the gym, right? With going to the gym and exercising, right? And there's a difference between going to the gym and being intentional about getting fit and exercising or going to the gym and just going through the motions, okay? What do I mean by that? Okay, say person A, right? They're going to the gym every day, right? They have their routine, they have it planned out, they have their nutrition, right? They have their waters, they have their, their supplements, they have everything ready, they're intentional, right? They get to the gym, they get their reps done, they get their sets done, their, their, their form is correct, right? And then you have person B, right? Who just kind of shows up, dragging their feet in there, right? Just on the treadmill, just, they don't want to be there. We've all seen those people right at the gym. So after 90 days, do you think that person A is going to be in better shape or person B? Obviously person A, right? You have to be intentional about everything that you do, including this business. Okay, guys. So I'm going to cover before Mario comes up, I'm going to cover five critical tasks. Okay, guys, and I hope that you guys have a notepad. I hope that you guys are taking notes. And that's one thing, you know, I see your, your coach, Eric, I see, you know, Jason, they're taking notes, right? That's one thing that when you guys show up to these meetings, when you show up to training, anytime that you're in front of anybody, right? It doesn't matter who they are, you could learn something. Okay, be a student. I know that right now everything's on Zoom, right? And we can easily be distracted by things going on with the kids, with the dogs, with whatever, right? but really block out these times that you have in front of your coaches to learn. Okay, guys, they've had success and they're continuing to have success so they can teach you something. So every time you get on, right? I still have a notepad. Every time I get onto my trainings, have a notepad, take some notes guys, cause you will never know what you hear that can change your business. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys five critical tasks. Okay, and looking back at my career, Eric, when I first started, and I thought, okay, what did I do every day that really made the difference, right? A lot of people think it's the big things. It's the recruiting. It's the premium. Obviously, yes, guys, that's important. But that's kind of like a byproduct of you doing what you need to get done on a daily basis. And what I like to, what I like to do is share things that you are in control over, okay? You can't control what your team does. You can't control even what you close, to be honest with you. But you can control what? Your attitude and your activity, Right. And these five things, if you control these five things on a daily basis, almost like these are like your five things that do or die, you have to get done every day. You might not see results the first day. You might not see results the second day, but eventually if you're consistent with it, you're going to start to see results. And if you're at a point in your business where you're like, man, I just haven't gotten the success that I've wanted. I haven't seen the results. You know, my spouse is on me, right? Do these things every day for a 30 day challenge. Okay not two days and take a break, not three days, no, 30 days. And you will not recognize your business. You can be literally by yourself right now. And in 30 days, you will not recognize your business guys. So I'm giving you guys my secrets. Okay. And it's very simple, right? And, and this is it guys. After I tell you, you'll be like, that's it. Yes, that's it. It's the little things. Okay. It's not the big things. Just like on the news, you never hear how many, how many homes termites destroyed but you hear about hurricanes or tornadoes, right? Those are the big things, but more homes are destroyed by termites, which are little, but we never hear about it, right? So it's the little things, okay? So look, let me tell you guys, number one, write this down guys. And you could even be a, an RVP and still making sure that you do these and it's gonna grow your business, okay? Number one is self-improving, okay? I'm sure you guys have heard that before, right? Self-improving is so important, guys. And I know that now in our day and age, we are like an information overload. We have YouTube, we have podcasts, we have social media. There's so many things that you can listen to. But look, number one thing, if you're not a field trainer, right? If you are not considered a field trainer on your team, you should not be listening to anything but your recruiting presentation, 
but your whatever presentations you guys use, you should not be listening to anything but that. Your number one priority is to become a field trainer, okay? And not to become a trainer to sell. No, become a trainer to train other trainers, okay? That is your whole job, right? You will become financially independent by becoming a trainer to train others, okay? Becoming a trainer to teach other people to train. That's like a whole nother level of training, if that makes sense, okay? So if you are not a trainer yet, right? And if you're asking yourself, what's a trainer? You're not a trainer. Okay, get with your trainer to make sure that you become a trainer. Don't be listening to anything but your presentation on a recording or however your training system is until you have it mastered, okay? And man, guys, Zoom honestly makes everything so much easier. You know, at least out here, we're still doing Zoom appointments, right? We're not doing uh, face-to-face yet. So back in the day, right, last year, back in the day, we had to actually give presentations, right? We used to sit in front of a client and we used to have the presentation backwards to us so the client can see. So you had to know the presentation. Nowadays, you can just look at the screen and you know it, but be so good that you have it memorized that you don't even have to look at the presentation and you can give it, okay? Now, after you've mastered your presentation, guys, read on leadership. We're in a leadership business. We're in a people business, okay? There's a lot of information out there, but master what's gonna help you in your business. I love John Maxwell. John Maxwell is one of our absolute favorite and we we actually wrote a book with him And I'll I'll share the name with you guys so you can read it. We wrote a book with him and he is the absolute best when it comes to leadership, guys. So I would suggest that you sharpen your leadership skills. Okay, people don't leave Primerica because of the money or the products they leave because of people issues. Okay, so if you have not mastered your people skills, master your people skills. Okay, and obviously listen to some motivational, whatever you want to do, right? I, we love to listen to audiobooks when we were, you know, in LA, the traffic's insane. So whenever we had to uh, drive somewhere, we'd have an hour or two to listen to stuff. So whatever it is, if you're a reader, if you're a listener, whatever it is, guys, listen to something at least 30 minutes a day. Okay. So that was number one, self-improvement. Number two, communication. Okay. Calling your teammates. Okay calling all your teammates, your key guys on a daily basis is so important. Now your new people, don't bombard them all day long, every day, no. Just send them a message, check in with them, how you doing, how's your licensing process, let's get you in the field, whatever it may be, but your key people, you gotta communicate with them on a daily basis, okay? Master the two minute phone call. And this is something I learned with Mike Sharp, right? Mike Sharp is one of our coaches. He is incredible, right? He's the highest paid person in Primerica. Um, Mike Sharp told us, master the two minute phone call. And why two minutes? Because if you have 30 people to call for the day, you can't be on the phone with them for 10 minutes. That'll take your whole day, right? Two minute phone calls. And what does that phone call consist of? Hey, Eric, how you doing, man? How's your day going? What do you got going for today? He's going to give you his activity. I'm going to tell him my activity, right? As his, as his leader, as his coach, I'm going to give him my activity as well, right? All right, cool, Eric, kill it. Let's, let's talk at the end of the day. Jason, how you doing, Jason? What do you got going on for the day? Man, this is what I got going on for the day. I'm sitting with this person, whatever it may be. Two minutes, not even two minutes, right? 30 seconds sometimes, okay? Because sometimes we like to talk, right? Especially us women, we like to talk. We like to catch up. How you doing? And yes, there's a time and place for that. But when you're calling all your teammates two minutes, guys, okay? So if you're one of those people that likes to keep your coach on the phone for 30 minutes and maybe they don't answer you all the time, it's because of that, okay? So two minutes, master the two-minute call. That was number two. Number three, being on KTs every day. Okay, guys, if you are on appointments every day on a qualified appointment with a husband and wife, you're giving yourself an opportunity to close, okay? To make money, to get results, okay? Now, granted, I know sometimes our appointments reschedule, right? I don't know if that's ever happened to you guys, but our appointments reschedule, right? And that's okay. But if your appointments reschedule, be at least setting up three for the next day. Okay, and again, with Zoom guys, back then we could do two because we had to commute, right? But now you should be having at least four appointments a day. If you're full-time, if this is what you do for a living, if this is how you feed your family, you should be doing at least four qualified appointments a day and then your interviews and all that stuff that's something else but you should be on four qualified appointments a day that you're giving yourself an opportunity to close and show your new people results show them that this business works okay 
because our ratios are half of our appointments will reschedule. Okay, so if we have four, two will stay and we'll close one. Okay, whether you're helping your licensed teammate or you're training new people, you're going to get results if you're focused on having four appointments a day. And like I said, if those four cancel, okay, work on setting up three for the next day. Okay, so I would almost even have like a checkoff list. Okay, did I do my five critical tasks for this day? Okay, and I'll repeat them again at the end so you can kind of, you know, have them in a nutshell. That was number three. Number four, adding 10 to 15 new contacts to your inventory. Okay, our business, luckily, we don't have inventory. If you own a, a supermarket, if you own a clothing store, if you own a coffee shop, if you own any type of business, you have product, you have merchandise. You have to invest before you make money, okay? Here we don't, but you should treat it as new numbers are your inventory, okay? Luckily, thank God, you know, after 16 years in this business, we have never struggled for an appointment. We have never said, oh crap, we don't have appointments. Why? Because we kept adding new names and numbers to our inventory, right? I don't know if anyone has experienced your business kind of go up and down, right? You have a good month and then you have a bad month and you have a good month again. You feel like you get momentum and you lose momentum, right? I don't know who's ever felt that if you can raise your hand, right? It's not that this business is up and down. It's that our activity is up and down. So we're not consistent with setting up appointments. Okay. So I, we made the mistake of having a boatload of momentum and Mario's going to do a great training on momentum, right? That you want to make sure that you're listening to, and we stopped doing the things that got us the momentum. So then a week later, after the momentum runs out, we're like, oh my gosh, what happened? We're scrambling, right, to set up appointments. But if you're consistent with setting up your appointments with adding new inventory, you won't have to deal with that. Okay, guys, so adding 10 to 15 new names and numbers, that could be through social media, that could be prospecting, that can be referrals. Any way that you can add 10 to 15 new names and numbers, you'll find yourself busy all the time right? You won't have time for the Primerica Blues to set in, okay? So make, making sure you add 10 to 15 new contacts. And number five, last but not least, is picking up a check, right? We call it pick up a check because we had to actually pick up checks, you know, like a few years ago. Nowadays, everything's electronic. We don't need an actual check. But I mean, close, close something, whether it be an investment, a life app, uh, a recruit, and uh, anything that you are closing, right? You're showing your new people success, guys, close something, Okay, and if you think about it, most months, right, have an average of 30 days. If you pick up some type of result every single day, guys, you're gonna be finding yourself running about a 30 by 30 base shop. Okay, and that's very respectable. As an RVP, that is very respectable. Now, if you're doing that as a future RVP, you are on your way to becoming a regional vice president and a big regional vice president. Okay, guys, so those are the five critical tasks. And again, I'll repeat it. So you can do a checklist, okay? Number one is self-improve for at least 30 minutes. Number two is calling your team, communication. Number three is be on at least four KTs a day or setting three for the, or setting, I'm sorry, four for the next day. And number four, add 10 to 15 new contacts to your inventory. And number five is close. Okay, and closing counts if you're training a new person, if you're training a licensed person. One thing that Mario and I did was uh, we really we really utilized our partnership. And I know that you guys are very strong in your partnership organization. We're very strong with that. And we really identified our roles. We solidified it and it made our career so much easier, right? Knowing what our roles were. So if you're in a partnership and you don't have your roles identified, guys, do that today, okay? When we didn't, I was getting fired every day, right? I was getting kicked out every month of the, of the office, right? Because I, I didn't have my role solidified, okay? And Mario's up next. But one thing that I want to share with the partners on this call is to tell you that you're so important. You're so important to your business, okay? Don't ever underestimate your power and your influence on your team, okay? When we had the biggest explosions, Eric, on in our business was when we had kids, believe it or not, Right? How? I don't know. It was crazy. It was a blur, but we did. Honestly, when we had our, our first uh, son, right? He just turned nine years old. Um, we were new RVPs. We were making a hundred thousand in income. And, you know, I found out I was pregnant. I was scared to death, right? Because I'm like, man, what's going to happen to our business? What's going to happen to our goals and dreams, right? I thought that, you know, everything that I <clears throat> had worked for was going to go down the drain, right? Crazy thinking, right? That's the way that I was programmed. So I said, no, I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm not going to let that happen to our business. Because look, if I was at a job, I would still have to put in my eight to 10 hours a day at my job, 
So because I had a child didn't mean that I stopped completely working in my business, right? So uh, we went from when Mario was born, little Mario was born, we're making, uh, we had just got our second diamond to the time that he was six months old. Uh, we had cl clicked six months old, we had clicked over our fourth diamond. So we jumped two diamonds in a matter of six months. And how, because of the training that Mario is going to share with you guys, how to build momentum, right guys? Momentum is that word, right? The big mo that everybody is striving to hit is momentum, right? And then when we had Max, um, we had just, clicked over 500,000 in income, right? That's our little guy, He does, he's six years old. And by the time that Max was six months old, we had went from 500,000 to 1.2 million. Okay, so we were jumping a diamond every month. Now, did that happen because Mario and I were just sitting on the couch, just go get him team? No, absolutely not, guys. It took absolutely everything we had because we had the goal of becoming the youngest million dollar earner and we had like a deadline, right? But how amazing that it's possible here. Where else could you go and give yourself a $900,000 pay raise in 18 months? Where could you go and do that? Nowhere but here, guys. And we're going to share that with you. So I don't want to take more of Mario's time because I know that you guys have, we want to respect your time as well. But I hope that that helped you guys, Eric. We are rooting for you guys. We love your family and we can't wait for your family uh, to cross that million dollar mark. And man, I, I, I don't know if your mom's listening, but I just wanted to tell her that, man, if I could just be half of the woman that she is, raise incredible boys like she did with you guys, I would be happy. You know, that's what we strive to is we want our boys to love the business like you and your brother love the business and to have an incredible business, uh, family business like you guys do. So we love you guys, man. We anything that we can do to help. We're here for you guys. And with that, um, I'm going to introduce Mario so he can come up and share with you guys. Um, man, obviously, he, that Mario is just incredible, not just because he's my husband, but I just admire his vision, his work ethic. I mean, just the, the guy is nonstop, right? I don't know how he gets it. It has to be God that gives him this energy that he has, but he's just an amazing, amazing visionary that literally thank God for him. Because if it was up to me, I would have been comfortable making 250,000, 300, 400, five. You can live in a, you can live a pretty amazing life at half a million dollars in income. Right. But it's not about the money. Like I told you guys in the beginning, it's the bigger your vision is the bigger your team is, the more room your, te your, your team has to grow, right? And that's why we're not done yet with our team. That's why we keep after it because we want our guys to hit a million and their guys to hit a million and it just become an explosion, right? And I know that's exactly what your parents want for you guys. I mean, your parents have an incredible life already, right? But I know that they're making room for the brothers, right? For your teammates and everybody to grow in that vision. And Mario definitely is the visionary. He is the coach. And babe, I want you to uh, take it away. Go ahead. Thank you guys for having us on. Thank you. I see, I see, yeah, I see Yvonne, uh, what was on there and Ed and stuff, but man, that, that's amazing. You did a phenomenal job, Franny. That's, that's beautiful. And uh, man, that's, that's what it's all about, partnership, guys. And yes, when Franny got started, she was 18 years of age. I don't know how it, it's happened, but it's going to be 16 years together in the business, right, my love? And dude, I don't know how she does it, but she, she's, uh, she's 21. She just turned 21 years of age, right, guys? When you're rich, guys, they don't tell you, they give you that secret formula, how to stay young and looking good like Franny, right? So man, guys, I'm telling you, some of you guys, are, you're not ugly. You're just broke, guys. Okay, you, you need to make some money. All right. Have you seen some of these celebrities before and after? Like, damn, what the hell? All right, guys. So look, uh, th that's that's that should give you hope for a lot of us, right, guys, including including myself. I know I look better than I, when I first got started. And what I'm going to share with you guys uh, today are some tips on what you got to do to take your business to the next level. And it all starts with momentum, guys. Momentum will either eat you up. I'm telling you. And, and make you feel like, man, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, or momentum will take you to a whole nother level, guys. See, th this is something very, very important that you guys need to understand that if we play team, you're unstoppable. And look, who you're around is everything. And I mean everything. And I'm gonna share my screen with you in a bit, but what Franny said about, you know, how we got started in our personal story, it's so true, guys. She was, she was hitting more on, you know, the struggles she went through. I went through the same thing. 
And today I'm not going to hit too much on my personal story because um, I got 30 minutes to share with you guys, but I'm going to share with you guys some amazing uh, nuggets on what you need to start doing to take your business to a whole nother level. And guys, Franny and I are still after, we're still developing uh, trainers. We're still working in the field. It's not about a dollar. It's about making a difference. We want to be big. We want to do something that's never been done. Um, I believe in our hierarchy, um, we're like top two this month or number one in personal production. We're number one, definitely in, in personal production and investments. And we're number one, um, we're at one by like 7,000 personal for the month and over a million dollars in investments also. So guys, we keep leading from the front because leading from the front equals, how can I say it in a nice way? You're being relevant. And having a big base shop makes you, makes you relevant. So that's why we do it. We know that us leading our team is gonna take them to the next level. And I'm challenging all of you guys here, all of you guys here, to make sure you guys go to the next level, to make sure um, you guys lead from the front, personal production. You guys lead from the front with a big base shop. Why? Big base shop, remember this, a big base shop, a big team equals big influence. Little base shop equals little influence. Well, what if you don't have a big base shop in the beginning? Well, big personal producing until you build a big base shop. Don't personally produce to be personally producing. If Franny and I still had to personally produce right now to take care of our bills, guys, then you know what? We're, we're doing something wrong. But if we're personally producing to be an example, to get bigger, to have more influence, then, then you got something going on. All right, guys? So don't personally produce just to personally produce. That won't get you nowhere. I know people that have been in the business 20 years that are great personal producers, but they have not one person following them. That's not what you want. You personally produce to duplicate yourself. To this day, I don't do appointments by myself. To this day, I always have somebody on the Zoom with me every single time because I'm not here to be a salesperson. I'm here to be a builder. Tell yourself, I'm a builder. And I don't care what story you told yourself. Oh, no, I'm just good at personal production or I'm just good at securities. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's where you're comfortable at. Stop lying. I'm serious. I don't know who put that lie in your head or, or why you keep telling yourself that same lie. Just how you program yourself to think that way. You can unprogram yourself. All right. You can program yourself to do something else. All these limited beliefs, guys, that's not from God. All that doubt, all that fear, you think our creator put that in your head? No, you did. You let the enemy do that. It's time that we do some changes. It's time that you snap out of it today because you're not just hurting yourself. You're hurting everyone around you. You're hurting your team. You're hurting your upline. You're hurting your family. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting your kids. You might not have kids. You might be hurting your future kids. Guys, if not now, when? Seriously. When are you going to stop buying your damn excuses? I got tired of being broke. I got tired of seeing my parents struggle. I got, man, I got tired of it. When is enough going to be enough? See, your, God did not call on your parents, maybe. Maybe God didn't call on your parents. Maybe they didn't call on your siblings. Maybe they didn't call on your children. Maybe God called on you to change your family tree forever, to break the change of poverty forever for your family. That curse of like, man, my grandparents were broke, living paycheck to pay. Oh, they did all right. My parents were living paycheck to pay. They did okay. Who said that we get to live okay in the greatest country in the world? I don't care what anyone says. It's funny, America is so great that its own haters won't leave. It's crazy how many people hate on America. I'm serious. Are we perfect? Heck no. Absolutely not. But it's crazy that, our, that its own haters won't leave. They talk all this crap. Hey, you don't like it? Leave. Leave. Do we need to improve a lot of things? Absolutely. Absolutely we need to. We're far from perfect. But guys, people are not dying. They're not dying. Okay, to leave this country. 
People are dying to come into this country. Why? Because it's great. But if you have, like, man, Mario, getting political? Hell no, I'm not. I love, I love, I love Democrats. I love Republicans. I love Americans. That's what I love. I love them all. I'm not a judge of what, no way. I love them all. I love every skin color. I, I love them all. It's none of that. I'm against victim mentality. Victim mentality. I'm serious. And is there some victims? Absolutely there is. But man, even the people that are victims, they still come out and be victors. Why? Because the way they think. See, maybe you're around your family and everyone in your family, hey, we are victims. This is who we are. This is what it is. And it's a bunch of it. It's a bunch of it. Don't buy into that. If your family and your core group is that way, good luck being successful. Hey, me and that beautiful lady, Franny Arizon right there, we're mentally tough. We are. Man, you, you won't find tougher people than us. I'm telling you, it don't get too tough for us. I'm just letting you know, guys, we are crusaders. We die hard, man. When things hit us, we think crazy. Ask my girl, when adversity is hitting us, we don't say, oh, poor us. Why us? We're such, oh, man, why? No. You know what we say? You know, Franny, what do we say when adversity hits us? What do we say? We say that a big blessing's coming, that something amazing is coming down Ooh, the road. That's right. What if you can just change that one thing today? Instead of being a victim and feeling sorry for yourself, say, man, a blessing's coming. A blessing's coming. Something good is coming. And guess what? It does. Because guess what? We're preparing our mind for that. See, guys, if you go out, this is something very important. When, I don't know if this is ever happening to you, but you buy a car and no one has that car, but when you buy it, you see it everywhere. By a raise of hands, by a raise of hands, how, how many, how, how, that's happened before, right? And then you get to like, oh, that's that model, that's that one. Damn, I don't even know that there are so damn many models, right? Yes or no? Happens all the time, except when you drive like a, 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 a well, it depends in your area. In our area, Hardly anyone drives a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini. I'm like the only one like, damn, where they're at. That's, that's amazing. All right, guys, there's levels to this thing too. Okay. Uh, but man, I remember when I first got a car, everyone had that stuff, but guys, I want you to remember this and write this down. Your energy introduces you before you can introduce yourself. Some of you guys, not all of you guys, but some of you guys are listening to this thing. I'm being honest with you. And, and, and Franny is a multi multi millionaire. And you can be like, wow, that's very arrogant. Why are you sharing that? You are the victim I'm talking about. You should be fired the heck up. That like, dude, a multi, multi millionaire poured into me this morning. She gave me her secrets on how I can be just like her. Right mindset. Like, oh, arrogant. They forgot where they come from. You're the victim. You're the victim. You won't ever be anything. Look, let me tell you something right now. And Freddie told me. Babe, let it rip like it's our base. So I'm, I'm, I'm going at it. All right. So Ortiz, is, is that cool or is this too much for your guys? Do I need to tone, tone it down or pick it up a little bit? Oh dang! All right. Hey, Gail just said turn it up a little bit. Let's go. You ready? So guess what? Your energy introduces you before you can introduce yourself. How are you on this Zoom? Are you dressed for success? Are you up ready? Are you taking notes? Or are you freaking laying down with your camera off and you're freaking dozing off and fuck, it's hitting your freaking face? Which one are you? Franny talked about it's the little things that stop you from being big. Guys, how you receive the message, how you're taking notes, your posture is everything. They did studies on it, on who retains information. Guys, when someone's on and they're sharing, that everything they got, man, I'm alert. And especially, especially it's not someone that, there's a huge difference between those people that tell you like, hey, um, you know, like, you know, they're telling you what to do and they never did it. What are those people, Franny, that book out vacations for you, but they never been there? A travel agent. A travel agent. Some people are travel agents. They really are. And they sound damn good. They're good salespeople, but they never did it. See, 
We traveled there. We're a tour guy. We're like, hey, we've been there, done it. Hey, watch out right there. You're going to fall and die, bucko. All right, don't go there. Okay, hey, that's a landmine right there. Uh Uh-uh, don't go there. Don't go there. We're telling you exactly what you got to do because we've been there, done that, and showed other people how to do that. You know how many millionaires we mentored in the company? A bunch of them. A bunch of them. And I'm looking at the next hierarchy that I would love to mentor to a million. Right? That's why I'm talking to you like this. That's why I'm talking like you're my very own. All right? And if you, and if you like this, you know, if you like this, well, get ready because there's going to be more. We're going to help you guys. I want to make sure the Ortiz family crosses over a million, not next year, this year, this year. We got to play team. We got to do something big. See, I want you to write this down. This is something important. It's not money. It's not strategy. It's not a system. It's not technology. It's teamwork that remains the ultimate competitive advantage, both because it is so it is so powerful and so rare. If you can get all the people in your organization rowing in the same direction, you can dominate any industry, any market, against any competition at any time. My question to you, are you ready to play team like never before? Well, talk is cheap. Guys, you can be a part of something way bigger than yourself. For the first time ever in your life, say, you know what? It's not about me. It's about team. And you have no idea the blessings that are going to come your way because God loves unity. A house divided cannot stand. A lot of us, we let our ego, our ego stop us from greatness. And what does ego stand for? Who knows, who knows what ego stands for? Let's see if they can put it on the chat here. Let's see who's paying attention. Edging God out. That's correct. Like, dang, this guy, is, this guy talks kind of tough for, for talking about God so much. Man, our God's not a no pansy. He's a king of kings. I'm just telling you guys, he ain't no pansy. Guys, just, I, I, it, it's, it's crazy. I, I want you to understand this, that if you start applying what, what Franny just showed you today, there's no limit. There's no limit on where you can be. There's no limit. But it all starts with playing team. If you guys play team, you're going to be unstoppable. If you don't play team, good luck. I'm telling you, good luck building something big. It, it ain't going to happen. So look, let me, let me tell you something. I'm going to share, I'm going to share with you guys some stuff that is super important. I was talking about mentally being mentally tough, right guys, who you're hanging around with It is everything. Why am I hitting on that? Because of this. Okay. This is, this is something very, very important and make sure you guys can see my, um, I want to make sure you guys can see my, my screen. Is it, can you guys see my screen pretty good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfect. And this, this is something very important. Proximity. Proximity is power. I want you to write that down. I want you to look it up. What is proximity? What is that? What does that mean? Proximity is power. See, guys, Franny and I are tough. We know this business. We've been there, done that. But we're not good enough to hang around negative people and expect to make it. It ain't going to happen. And guess what? Neither are you. Neither are you. Don't think you're going to keep on hanging out victims. Keep on hanging around negative people, and you're the only one that makes it. Wrong. It ain't going to happen. As a matter of fact, you know what happens? I have friends. I have friends that made millions, millions of dollars. They went back to the hood and hang around victim mentalities. I'm being honest with you. Poor mentalities, like, man, like, man, this is, this is how it is. And guess what? A couple years later, lost everything because that's who they're hanging around with. See, guys, you got to make a decision. You got, you got to make a decision. Like, what, what are you going to do? And am I saying to stop loving your family, stop loving your friends? 
No, but you got to learn to love them from a distance. You got to let, hey, stay enough away that you're not affecting me no more, that they're not an influence in your life anymore. That is super important. See, guys, you are who you hang around with. You guys have never heard that before, huh? That's something huge, right? It is so true. You hang around $10 million earners, 10 of them, 10 of them, you're bound to be the 11. You hang around 10 victims, guess what? You're going to be the 11. It just happens that way. Has it ever happened to you? I'm being real. Guys, has, let's just, these are facts. Has it ever happened that you're having a great day? And you can nod your head because I'm watching that you're having a great day. How many of you guys have ever had a great day, right? Today should be a great day. Like, man, I'm having one right now. I'm, 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 man, Mario's kicking our butt right now. I'm, I'm going to walk out of this training with three shoes, two on my feet and one up my butt, right? Kicked our butt. But guess what? Out of love, right, guys? It's out of love. Like, dude, that was a good butt kicking. I need to get my butt into gear. That's great. But look at this. I want to, I want to, I want to make sure I help you out. You're, you're in a good energy. Everything's good. And then someone comes in with bad energy. Has that ever happened? They're mad. They don't even have to say nothing. Or they're sad, right? What happens to your attitude all of a sudden? Matches theirs. As humans, that's who we are. Guys, you got to do this. You got to do this. This is so something very important. Let's say this is the remote control to your life, right? You just meet a brand new person. You know what you do? Here you go. Control me. If you're mad, get me mad. If you're sad, get me sad. If you're, why? Why do you give the control of your emotions, of your feelings to the newest per people that you never even met? It's crazy. Some of you guys can get cut off on the freeway and it ruins your whole day. Can you believe what happened? And you get home and you get mad at your family. Can you believe what happened to me today? Man, that's not right. People are just this. And listen, and you ruin your whole attitude. Your kids might have been having a great day and you ruin it because you give the control. Like, hey, I know you're over there, but here's the control of my life. Here you go, ruin my day today. How dumb are we sometimes? Let's be real. How many of you guys have ever been guilty of that? Raise your hand. And the rest that didn't raise their hand, guess what? You're freaking lying. Because to this day, I'm that way. And I'm like, oh, not going to give that person control of my life. What am I thinking? Heck no. And I snap out of it. Dude, yesterday, just, just yesterday alone. Hold, hold on one second, guys. Just yesterday alone, uh, that happened to me. You know, uh, someone was like being rude. You know, what the heck? You think I'm going to let them steal my shot? No way. Guys, they are, <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but like, dude, no. No, I'm not gonna let them do that. The old me, the old me would have would have would have would have made me feel like, oh man, that's not right. You know, uh, th that's not right. What's going on? Blah blah. Hey, you mess with the wrong person, and dude, let them ruin my entire day. Silly, dude. Silly. Guys, we gotta change that. Okay, that's super important. So look, what I, what I'm gonna do is this. You gotta make sure you talk. We talk about momentum. And how to create momentum, because the only way we're going to get this team to the next level is by creating massive, massive momentum. All right, guys. And he or she that has the most momentum wins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this uh, part of the screen. Are, are you guys seeing this part by any chance? Are you seeing us with John Maxwell? I just want to make yes, sure. Yes, sir. All right, yep. perfect. So proximity is real. Right, guys? It's crazy. Some of our favorite authors, we're buddies with them now. How crazy is that? We actually wrote this book together. And um, Franny can send you the link if you're interested in uh, reading more about it. Uh, she'll send it to the Ortiz family. You can, you can order it. It's a phenomenal book. Uh, everyone on our team gets, gets it and helps them uh, retain the business and help them understand this business. So it's really, really awesome. And guys, it's not just us. It, it was the top 10 um, teams and in people that are builders, guys, is crazy. And, and I don't know how we got selected, but John Maxwell called us up and we're super honored and we're good buddies with them now. But man, who you hang around with is everything. Look, this is huge right here. This is huge. Okay. It says here, a train traveling 55 miles per hour on a railroad track can crash through a five foot 
thick. All right, it's supposed to say thick. Reinforce concrete wall without even stopping. How crazy is that? Boom, crash through that thing. But think about this, that same train starting from a stationary position won't be able to go through an inch thick block in front of its dragging wheel. Think about that. That same train that was unstoppable, boom, can go through a little inch block in front of its driving wheel. See, it's never, it's never the size of your problem that's the problem. It's the lack of momentum. Without momentum, even a tiny obstacle can prevent you from moving forward. With momentum, you'll navigate through problems and barely even notice them. See, you're not where you need to be because of what? Everyone say it with me, who knows? Momentum. Momentum is a leader's best friend or worst enemy. And momentum, momentum, she is jealous. She only goes to those that pay attention to her. She's not faithful. If you don't pay attention to her, she will leave you. Guys, there's people that are not as talented as you and they're winning way, way bigger than you. Like, it, it's like ops, like you're like, man, they gotta have a secret. They gotta be doing something better. No guys, when they harness momentum, they didn't let it go. They didn't get momentum and then take off for a week on vacation. They didn't get momentum and then say, oh man, you know, what? I'm gonna let off the pedal right now. Like, man, I'm good. Wrong, that's an employee mindset. An employee mindset will keep on making you employee money. You need to change to another level, another gear. That man, when Franny and I are killing it personally and with our base shop, like we are right now, it's because we want to, not because we have to. It's a whole different ball game. See, a leader's responsibility is to understand momentum and to move it forward for their organization and sustain it over time. Leading from the front, be an example. Hey, have your cameras on, looking sharp. Guys, this is something very important. I, I talk about this. And if today um, was the first time you heard this, well, it's okay. Next meeting, you be the one that's on. Willis, you, you, be, you, be, you be the one that's, man, first one on, last one to leave. Yes, like, oh, I thought that was when it was physical. No, even in Zoom, that man, when your teams jump up, of course, Willis is on. Of course he is. Of course, Timothy, Timothy's always on. That you're reliable. That's leading from the front. That is super important. Nancy, that you're the first one to leave. What a good attitude. That, I mean, you're the first one on. Uh, on. Last one, what a good attitude. You're sharp. That's super important. Brandon, the, I'm talking to the Rivera here. Look, look at this, man. That, that it, I don't care. If you're professional on top and party in the bottom, meaning you're on your underwears. You guys don't know I'm in my underwears right now. Look, I'm not even kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Look at Brent. Wow, Rivera got excited there. I don't know, bro. I'm married, bro. Freddie's watching you. What's going on there, dude? All right, look at this. But you, you follow me, guys? It don't matter. Seriously, sometimes we just rush like, bam, get on, put a coat on, and we good. Be ready, guys. Be ready for success. Amateurs have to get, have to, have to, <laughs> prepare. I'm, I'm being honest with you guys, man. Uh, amateurs have to prepare. They're like, oh man, they're, they're getting ready. No, At pros, pros, they've been prepared, guys. They've been ready. Don't wing this thing. Be prepared. Be ready. Guys, don't jump on a Zoom uh, um, one minute before it starts, guys. Know exactly what you got to do. When I'm sitting down with a client, I know as much as I possibly can about that client. When I'm sitting down with a recruit, I know as much as I possibly can for I can recruit them. For I can, uh, I can trigger something that's going to say, you know what? Yes, I want to join. And guys, we're experts in this between our four hierarchies. And look, we, we did it not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. We've been blessed to have four businesses. And every business has broken records. Every business. Guys, they're with us for 30 days. How is it that they break recruiting records and premium records in 30 days? And this, this organization has been around for 25 years, 30 years. How is that? Leadership. Not knocking anything that they've done before. Man, I'm so grateful. The people that even, guys, how the people that even sold their business. So we are so grateful to them. 
they're greater leaders because they said, you know what? We're going to put them in better hands. I'm just floored. They're like the ultimate servant leaders. But guys, it's leadership. It's environment. It's momentum. They get sucked into it, guys. It's crazy what happens. These guys are superstars. And look at this, guys. Momentum breakers versus momentum makers. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly through some of these because this is super important that you guys see this before I get to, uh, before I log off right here. But look, momentum breaker, double minus. Guys, that you're everywhere. That you're like, you're, 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 you're like focusing on this, focusing on that. No, guys, a leader drains away momentum by shooting at nothing or attempting everything. You want to create momentum? Do this. Have that laser beam focus. That one thing that you're focusing on. Some of you guys have three, four businesses on here and you wonder why you can't get one of them to really get going. You wanna be big? Focus on this. Oh, they talk about multiple streams of income. We make multiple streams of income here. Focusing on one thing. It's, it's bananas, guys, how good this thing is. You gotta see laser beam focus. Uh, Franny talked about last month, um, we, we, we made like around 320 between all, all of our business. That's bananas. That happened by me being distracted and all these other things. Nope. And this month, we'll, we'll break 350, 360 between all of our businesses. It's crazy. Guys, I'm not, Franny and I are not supposed to make $300,000 a year. We're making that a month now. Why? Because we, we're laser beam focused. We put God first. Right, guys? When things go right, it's God's fault. It's God's fault because of God, because of our team, because of our partnership. When things go wrong, we take responsibility. Clarity equals power. See, momentum breaker, focusing on the past. Momentum is drained by looking back at what might have been. Momentum maker, focusing on the future. Momentum is developed when pointing at better days ahead. And the only way, the only way that you can promise that tomorrow will be better than today is if you get better today. If every day you grow, your, your future is destined for greatness, guys. Do you, are you intentional about growth? Are you? Are you really? Are, is that one of your intentions? And if you're not, guess what? Be prepared. Be prepared to pa be passed up by someone that is. I'm not, I'm not ready for that, man. No way. You know, I want to make sure that we're the best example for our teams. See, momentum breaker, individualism. Focusing on me, 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 me. What's in it for me? I. Momentum is drained when everyone pulls apart. But momentum is developed when everyone pulls together. Guys, this is it. It's all about this. See, the... What one, uh, and I want to close with this, guys. I want to help you guys out. And we'll jump on some more things because I want to make sure this team goes to a whole nother level. But guys, I'm going to challenge you guys. I'm going to challenge you guys to like, man, let's play team like never before. Let's push the Ortiz family to a million dollar hierarchy. By you playing team, everyone benefits. Guys, before... Before we went RV uh, to become million dollar earners, we didn't have one person on our team making a hundred thousand, not one. Now I even lost track on how many a hundred thousand dollar earners we have. No BS. I really, if you ask Mark, how many hundred thousand dollars you have? I'm like, great question. Um, I don't know. If you can count how many hundred thousand dollar earners you, ha you, you have, guess what? You have too little. I'm being honest with you. I don't know. I just, I'm like, oh, shoot. Okay, we're approaching uh, uh, 70 regional vice presidents now. This is awesome. What the heck? All, <laughs> it's nuts, guys. And, 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 and we will be over 100 regional vice presidents. Why not you? But you got to play team. We'll be at 100 this year. Why not you? But you got to play team. If you're ready to play team, Get ready to have the greatest days of your life. Let me tell you something. Um, 
Man, one of the one of the greatest joys uh, of my life is being able to bless my 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 parents financially, being able to bless my my grandparents financially. Man, it's the most beautiful feeling in the world. I'm not gonna lie to you. Even when I see some of my teammates' parents, I love blessing them too. I I, I love it. You know, uh, you know that some of them that just were that mean a lot to me. And man, I remember all the no's. You see me confident now. Well, crap, you're going to be confident after so many no's, after so much rejection. I don't, you know, you're going to go through that. Right, guys? Some of you guys, oh, I'm, I'm just not good at this. Really? What are you good at right away? You were petrified at your job at first. You were scared, but you didn't punk out there. It's okay to fight for someone else's last name, but not yours. You should be scared of that. Be careful what you master. But I'm good at this. I'm good at construction. Where's that getting you? I'm not trying to be, well, at least it provides for my family. Hey, no disrespect. But is your job giving you enough that you can take care of your parents, that you can retire your in-laws? Hey, I have no problems with my in-laws. You know why? Because we got to buy them a house. Because we take care of them. As a matter of fact, if Friday's trying to, the confidence coming out of my girl, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna call your mama. And I'll call, I'll call her. I'm like, hey, you know what? Franny's acting up. And she'll check her too. Like, hey, you don't want to lose this one. All right. I'm just telling you, hell no, right? Guys, I'm just being real with you. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. I'll call my, I'm like, oh, you you being really bad. I'm gonna call your dad right now. And dude, the in-laws are on my side. You follow me? Dude, it's amazing. They, they, hey, I, I, it, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. <laughs> and Frank said it's true. Yeah, and, and it is true. Guys, get big. Bless your parents. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. Man, I, I, guys, if, if you know me, I don't know if my, my hold on one second. Look at this. Um, babe, where's my uh, backpack? Look at this. I, I always carry, so I, I carry some cash with me, always. All right, and hopefully Franny uh, gets my backpack. It's a, it should be in the living room, my love. But I always carry some cash with me. And you know how beautiful it is to get a, have a have like a like hundreds in my hand when I didn't have nothing. But man, to have everything I got and just say, here you go, put it in their hands, and they're like, oh my goodness! Like I did that for Franny's dad, for 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 my mom. And, and it's the most beautiful thing in the world. Look, I, I, you, you think, look, I, I always carry, I always carry some, some cash with me, right? Because this don't fit in your wallet, right, guys? So, uh, so I, I carry some cash, and I'm like, you know what? Whoever I see, when I see them, here you go, boom. They're like, oh my, no, 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 oh my, no, 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 no. This is too much. This is too much. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh man, that feels so damn good. All the no's, all the rejections, all the people making fun. Are you doing that Primerica thing? Huh? Are you a millionaire yet? Hey, they don't say that no more. You know what they say? Dang, I know that guy. I knew him when he didn't have nothing. Man, are you gonna prove them wrong? Or are you gonna prove them right that you are not good enough? Stand for something. Stand for your goals and dreams. Go fight. When things get tough, don't punk out. Don't quit. Recommit. Play team. And one day, one day, they're going to be asking you to jump on one of these meetings to inspire the world, to fight for their dreams. Thank you for being on. And thank you for giving Franny and I the honor to talk to the Ortiz family that we love so much. Thank you so much. And Franny knows, I'm like, I thought the meeting was at 7 p.m. our time. She's like, 7 a.m. I'm like, Friday, what the heck? 7 a.m.? She didn't tell me to this morning, too, because she knows I'm not a morning person. She knows that. I'm a night owl. She's like, yeah, babe, it's uh, in the morning. I'm like, what are you doing so early? Babe, I told you 7. I'm like, 7 p.m. She's like, no, 7 in the morning. I'm like, oh, hell no. Like, babe, what the heck? And you know what? She's like, babe, it's the Ortiz family. I'm like, you're right. And you know, like, uh, you know, that's how much we love your leaders. Y Yvonne, we love you. Ed, we love you. The Ortiz brothers, man, you guys know we love you guys. You guys are such great examples. Every, every, everybody here, man, we're going to go do something epic. Let's get this team to a million dollars. Let's get it done. Thank you for having us on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you. Oh, thank you. 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 Thank you.
All the time, God is good. Bless, bless, bless. Let's go, Mario. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe. Fire coach, appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you, Franny. Come on, bye. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I got, uh, hey, guys. Hey, Mario, man. I, I, man, I sincerely thank you so much for everything, man. You brought it to the table, you know. And, and let me tell you, Franny, oh, man, you, you, I mean, you. I shed tears. I'm telling you. I mean, emotional. Like, And I, and I thank you so much for that. And, uh, and I know that, uh, hey, listen, very, very seldom do we have our queen bee speak. And, uh, and I know that uh, she, she, she wants to address you guys because I'm telling you, uh, you've made a major, major impact in our organization. And we thank you so much, man. We look up to you guys. I mean, the way you guys have taken this business to the next level, uh, $3.6 million, man, you truly, truly, truly deserve that plus. And just continue doing it, man, because all you're doing is just giving us a hope that we know, hey, we just got to be like you, man, and we just got to continue growing there. So that was phenomenal, man. And I cannot thank you enough. All these points, man, I, I, I tell you, uh, I, man, phenomenal. So uh, I'd like to share Yvonne. Yvonne, are you in the house there? I am here. Can you guys hear me? Come on, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, you loud and clear, babe, loud and clear. Okay. okay, great. Listen, guys, what... I, I am feeling so emotional this morning. And um, it's amazing because I look at Franny and Mario and I'm thinking about the, thing about the, first, um, the day that we met them. Um, they were super attractive to me because they are such an amazing, cute couple. When I met them, they still, they still super cute now, right? But they were so cute. But the one thing that I look in them right now is that they have grown and changed in so many areas of their life. But there's one thing that they have never changed is in being humble and loving the people. They are still the same little couple that we met so many years ago as it is right now. And that to me is so valuable. And I hope that it is an example for so many people out there to follow because this is tremendous, you know, what they do for people. Um, the fact that Mario has said to us right now that he wants to mentor us, I'm telling you, this is not something that he just thought about right now. Mario, every single time Mario and Fanny have seen us, they have said to us, guys, listen, we want to work with you guys. We want to mentor you guys. We want to do things. And I have felt all this time that, you know, we do want their help, but it wasn't the right time. And I think that right now, this hierarchy is ready and momentum and in timing to go to a next level. So we welcome everything that they can do to help us get there because I know it's going to be incredible. The fact that when Fanny spoke today and she said that, you know, Yvonne impacted my life one day, let me tell you that every single time we are uh, or me, I, I'm not going to say this about it, but every time I am asked to share my testimony or to share with the company, I get so scared and it bothers me so much that I find ways to kind of like hope that I'm sick or that I can show up because I don't want to do it. But then when I hear Fanny all these years later saying those few words that she said impacted my life, that touches me tremendously, guys. It's, I wonder, I wonder how many people out there are waiting for you in this chat right now to say a few words that are going to change their life, but because of the fears that we have or because of the many excuses that we come up with, we're not going to bless them that way. So I am reminded every time that even if I'm not wanting to do something, I got to get out there and do it because it's going to change somebody's life besides mine too. I'm telling you guys, this, this business is like a water slide. You know, just, a, I'll just tell you a quick story here. Uh, just last week, uh, Ed and I decided to go to Puerto Rico to take my grandbabies. That was the main reason to take our grandbabies 
to meet my parents. You know, Roman turned two years old and my parents had not met him. This is their great grandson and they had not met them yet, right? And my dad is 90, almost 90 years old. And again, you know, when you are done acquiring things and loving things, there's greater things in life that you wanna achieve. And it's so good to have a vehicle that allows you to get there. So Ed and I, we did not have to call my boss, boss. We did not have to ask for time off. We just told the family, we are on the first week of March going to Puerto Rico because we want to take the grandbabies over there. And I'm telling you, I'm so glad that Jason and Jackie, Eric and Bryn did not, you know, say no to us. And they allowed us to grab those babies and take them over there. Because when we introduced those little guys to my dad, you should have seen his face. I'm telling you, I don't know if he's going to be alive tomorrow. I mean, he's almost 90, right? But the fact that we were able to bring that little bit of joy to him was amazing. But the story I want to tell you is about the water slide, the water slide at the hotel. So there is this big, humongous water slide in there. And Roman, like I said, he barely walked. I mean, he turned two in here, right? So Saturday, Sunday morning, Ed and Jason and Eric wanted to go um, out to go fishing, right? So I'm here at the hotel with these two kids. They can't stay in the room, so I decided to go to the pool and take them in there and let them just burn some energy over there, right? Well, we're there. Roman is looking at this humongous water slide on the top of a hill over there that only the big guys go to. And I'm telling you, I have always been the type of person that teaches people by allowing them to make mistakes or to just do it. So I'm here in the pool because somebody had to catch this baby if he decided to go on the water slide, right? And I'm telling Roman, you just go, go get on that slide right now, climb that, those stairs and get to the top and come down. Grandma's gonna be waiting in here for you, right? So you see this little bundle of joy, this butterball, you know, climbing up the steps, you know, wobbling up there, talking to everybody along the way. He gets on the top of the stair, which I don't know how, because I couldn't even see him climbing up there, right? But the thing is, all of a sudden, I hear all this laughter. I hear all this joy. And all of a sudden, here comes Roman. The water is bringing him down, and I catch him, and we're having fun. Why do I tell you that this business is like a water slide? All you got to do, guys, is get on the slide. The power of the water is going to take you to the destination. The power of the things that we have in place on this incredible system are going to take you to where you want. But the first thing is you got to listen to the voice that tells you, get on the slide. Do not quit. Do not go somewhere, just sit on it and watch. When you open your eyes, you're just gonna be somewhere celebrating that you dare to sit on the slide, let the water take you and run with it till the end. That's what we're gonna do, guys. I'm telling you, I know that I know that I know this hierarchy is ready to go to a ruby ring. And I'm telling you, when Mario and Fanny said, Franny said, this is a million dollar hierarchy. I'm telling you guys, the Ortiz family is a million dollar hierarchy, but the Ortiz family is not the nine of us guys. It's not just our sons, their wives and the kids. The Ortiz family is every single one of you. That's why we take this so seriously guys, that when they say Ortiz family, they're talking about you. They're talking about your opportunity to go places too. We just need you to say, I'm in. We're going to play together. You call a play. We're going to play with you until we get to the top. Guys, I love you. And you know I love you with all my heart. I am not quitting. Like Brandon said this morning, I was here this morning at 7 o'clock in the morning in the office by myself, nobody else, doing an appointment because somebody said to me, I'm listening to you, whatever you have to say. And I am just doing a presentation and getting this person. And Hector is in the calls right now too with us in here. You know why I do this in here, guys? Because we're not done. There's just so much to be done yet. There's so much I want to be a part of yet. There's so much that I can contribute to, you know, to this world and to what God has given me to do. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to the top. 
And I hope that you guys go with us too. So listen, with that being said, guys, I love you. Let's go out there. Let's make March an incredible Mario Franny. Thank you so much again. We love you from, I mean, from our hearts. We always have, we always will. Let's go make sure we do it. With that being said, Ed, I'm passing it out to you so you can call us out, aviators. Come on. We can't All hear right, you, coach. All right, you there? Nope, you're not, you're not, you got to unmute. He's muted still. You got to unmute. Hey, listen, I, I don't have any, and am I good? Can you guys hear me all right? Good? Well, listen, I have nothing else to say. Yvonne, nail this thing shut. I mean, it is just with Franny and Mario and doing everything, man. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. And, uh, hey, we are. We already know who we are. So let's go ahead and let the world know who we are. So if you can all unmute yourself.